Good morning, St. James. Welcome to morning prayer on Sunday, March the 29th. It is the fifth Sunday in Lent. We'll be starting our morning prayer on page 76 of your Book of Common Prayer. Right below this is a link to a document so you can read along. And you've also been emailed a link to the document as well. So however you're following along, please do so. Rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and repents of evil. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as, as it was, was in the beginning, is, is now, now, and will, will be forever. Amen. Our God is full of compassion and mercy. O come, let us worship. Turning to page 82. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Our God is full of compassion and mercy. Oh, come, let us worship. We're the psalm for today is Psalm 130. It can be found on, um, the, in the Book of Common Prayer on page 784. We will be reading it responsively, breaking at the asterisk. Out of the depths have I called you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to note what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you. Therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for him. In his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen in the morning. More than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. A reading from the book of Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, 
And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he had commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and they stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are complete, cut off completely. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil, then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The first canticle is found on page 94 of the Book of Common Prayer, the Song of the Redeemed. We will read it responsively, breaking at the asterisk. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done. Surpassing so human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth. O king of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you. Because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, now, and will, will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. The second reading is from the letter to the Romans. I set my mind on, to set my mind on the flesh is death, but to set my mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who, do, who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our second canticle is the third song of Isaiah, found on page 87 of the Book of Common Prayer. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land. Deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land. Ruin or destruction within your borders. Your you will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now and, and will, will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to John. 
Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death, rather it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, and having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place he was. Then after he said to his disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you and you are going there again? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was re referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how they lo he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, it is already, there already is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they might believe that you sent me. When he said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to him, to them, unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I spent a lot of time this week 
thinking about Lazarus, Lazarus and them bones. I guess that means I spent a lot of time this week thinking about illness and death. And I suspect I have not been alone in those thoughts. I read a novel once in which the author used the term death pains to describe the devastation felt by a young character at the loss of her father. That struck me as a great way to characterize a sadness so big it threatens to overcome life itself. In so many ways, that is exactly what we are preparing for, a sadness so great that it threatens to overcome life itself. We are watching that sadness unfold in the news each night. We read about it today in the death of Lazarus, and we are preparing to, once again, experience the sorrow of the crucifixion. It's the same great sadness running down Jesus' cheeks as he weeps at the tomb of his friend. Whenever I read this gospel, I can't help but wonder what it must have been like to be Lazarus. I suppose at first it wasn't too troubling. He became ill, but his friend would come and heal him. His friend had healed so many. His friend who'd cured the lame and the blind and the lepers. Surely this friend would come and restore him to health. I mean, after all, isn't that one of the perks of having a Messiah as your friend? As it became harder and harder for Lazarus to hold on, do you suppose he began to wonder, does Jesus love me enough to save me? When will he come? Will he come in time? Am I really sure he can save me? I suppose that that is when the death pains began for Lazarus. Not so much the actual pain of whatever death he was experiencing, but rather the doubt and the panic and the sorrow. And then Lazarus died. I wonder if Lazarus was surprised. I wonder what he felt. By the grace of God, it has been many years now since I felt dead. I don't think I've ever told you this story, it was uh, when I was being treated for breast cancer nearly 22 years ago now. One of the hallmarks of cancer is rapidly dividing cells, in other words, growth. This rapid growth is a characteristic that, of cancer that physicians used to target the kind of the chemotherapy that was best for me oh so long ago. One way chemo works is to seek out rapidly dividing cells, to seek out growth and attack them. Cancer, though, is not unique in the body. Other parts, like hair and the lining of your digestive tract, is also growing rapidly. I was told at the time that that's why I would lose my hair and experience nausea and other uncomfortable side effects that we really don't need to go into now. But one of the side effects that I wasn't prepared for was how dead I would feel. Now, let me explain. Right now, wherever you are, I bet you can feel your toes, or your arm, or your earlobe, can't you? And I don't mean feel them because your toes are pressing into your shoes, or your arms rubbing against your sleeve, or your earlobe is being brushed by your hair. I mean feel life in them, in those parts of your body. In fact, if you pay attention to any part of your body, you can feel the aliveness within it, can't you? It's as if there are, are little fingers of life wiggling here and there within me. At least that's how I like to think of it and how I picture it. And the truth is, I had never really even noticed that before. I had never paid any attention to what it felt like to be alive until I wasn't anymore. Until the chemotherapy went to work on all my rapidly dividing cells and stilled those fingers of life. It's not that my toes went numb, it's just that I couldn't, they didn't feel alive anymore, alive from the inside out. The same with my arms and my legs and my elbows. Nothing felt alive to me anymore. I wonder if that's what Lazarus felt, nothingness. Sort of like the old play Our Town where the dead sit at the cemetery, fading further and further away emotionally as they wait patiently for the resurrection day. That was a common belief. Martha had even assured Jesus that she knew Lazarus was going to rise on the last day. Or maybe Lazarus was already walking in God's company, 
Maybe he was already experiencing life after death. We've all heard about near-death experiences, about those people who have been clinically dead and have some experience of love and warmth and acceptance. Perhaps that's where Lazarus had gone for four days before Jesus rolled the stone away. In any event, the stone did move and Jesus did call his friend back to life again. I think I know what that felt like a little bit too. You see, the feeling of death that came with chemotherapy, it lasted only a few days after each treatment. Sometimes it was five or six, or sometimes it was eight or 10 days, but eventually I had what I had come to call my resurrection day. The day when life crept back into my fingers and my toes and ears and every other part of me. I never felt so alive as I did on those days. Life was just pulsing through my body. So I'm wondering, what about it? Are you alive? Do you feel life coursing through you? Or have you died inside? Have you let those death pains overtake you? Is there something that happened to you or that you fear or that you mourn that has stopped you in your tracks, that has stopped the growth that's happening in your life? that has rolled the stone between you and God? Have you retreated into a tomb of fear or anger or desperation or even boredom? Do you know that God is right outside, ready to roll the stone away and to bring us back to life? Do you know that God is ready to say to us, as Jesus said to the bystanders, unbind them and let them go set them free. The character in the book I mentioned, the one who described her sorrows as death pains, explained to her mother that what she meant by that phrase. And her mother responded, why darling, those aren't death pains, those are life pains. The trick is not letting those life pains wall us off from God. We may be walled off from each other right now, but we can't leave God out there on the other side of the stone waiting to get in. No matter what sadness or sorrow or hurt or anger we have experienced, we cannot let the fingers of life extinguish. Instead, we're called out of those tombs back into life with God. My hope is that we will spend the last little bit of Lent reflecting on what life pains we have experienced that might even be, and with that might, we might even be experiencing now. What have we allowed to come between us and God? May we find the courage to say, please Lord, come, unbind me, and set me free. Amen. Amen. Turning to page 96 in the Book of Common Prayer, or scrolling down to page 8 in your document, let us say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever and ever. Amen. Turning to page 98, 
Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. A call up for the day. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The call it for Sundays. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The call it for guidance. Direct us, O Lord, in all our doings with thy most gracious favor, and further us with your continual help, that in all our works begun, continued and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name and finally, by your mercy, obtain everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And a, call, a prayer for mission. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Amen. And finally, a prayer for a pandemic. We who are merely inconvenienced, remember, remember those whose lives are at stake. We who have no risk factors, remember those most vulnerable. May those who have the luxury of working from home Remember those who must choose between preserving their health or making their money. May those who have the flexibility to care for our children when schools close. Remember those who have no options. May we who have to cancel a trip. Remember those who have no safe place to go. May we who are losing our margin money in the tumult of the economic market. Remember those who have no margin at all. May those who quarantine at home. Remember those who have them. As fear grips our country, let us choose love during the time when we cannot physically wrap our arms around each other. Let us find ways to be the loving embrace of God to our neighbors. Amen. Please add your intentions, your prayer intentions now, either silently or aloud. In thanksgiving for the birth of Zoe Palmer. for all our parishioners who are alone. For this whole world as we battle this disease. For all the healthcare workers that they will be protected and that our hospitals will not be overwhelmed. For wise leadership. Turning to page 101 in the Book of Common Prayer, the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray such, give such an awareness of your mercies 
that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen. If you're not yet comfortable on Zoom, if you're not Zoomable, please reach out to me. I'm pretty good at getting people uh, comfortable with that platform, if I do say so myself. At least I'm willing to give it a shot. And then you can join us for morning prayer at, uh, on uh, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, or Compline on Mondays, Wednesdays, or Fridays, as well as other things coming up. For example, our catechesis class will be studying the book, The Way of Love, and we'll be doing that in a Zoom environment. So if you want to join that class, be sure that you have um, yourself up to snuff that way. Give me a call, we can do this together. Remember that I love you and that God loves you.